unpacking the CD collection today. And we're talking about Australian band, Hoodoo Gurus, alternative rock band. Um, I guess kind of started in the 80s. Uh, had a little bit of success in the United States, but not a ton, but a little bit, mostly like on probably like college rock and stuff like that. Um, but I got into them through my brother. Um, I think he had uh, a couple of their cassettes early on and I'd hear him playing them and stuff. And maybe I'd borrow his cassettes. And I remember seeing a video on U68, probably like 85 and, uh, and really liking that. Um, so... I think maybe the first record by them that I picked up was, hold your anticipation, Magnum Cum Laude. This was the first CD of theirs that I picked up myself. Um, got this through, I think, one of the record uh, clubs. You know, you get stuff in the mail. This came out in, what, 89? I think 89. So uh, picked this up back then. And love this record. It's my favorite record by them. I mean, every tune on here is just, uh, you know, something that I dig. And I'm pretty sure I heard there were two singles that I remember from this that were on, like, alt our alternative rock or college rock stations, Come Anytime in Another World. Um, and I think I remember hearing them on there and then knowing that I kind of liked the band a little bit and then hearing those made me pick up the CD. But... Um, it's just great. I mean, uh, like those two songs are awesome. Axe Grinder, Shadow Me, Glamour Puss, All The Way, Baby Can Dance, uh, Where's That Hit, Death in the Afternoon. Just a great, great record. Um, and then I started going back and picking up some of their earlier stuff after I became a big fan of that record. Um, this, I believe this is their debut, Stone Age Romeos. There's different artwork uh, for this record. Oh, there it is. <laughs> this is, uh, I think there are some versions that have this as the actual uh, cover art, but on my copy, it's this one. Um, and I remember my brother having this cassette and I've heard it. This is another really good one. Um, I Want You Back, which is in a cover of the Jackson 5 song. It's a really good one. Uh, Toho, uh, or Tojo, I think is pronounced. Uh, Leilani, Arthur, Dig It Up, Let's All Turn On, uh, Zanzibar, My Girl, which is not a cover of the Temptation song, but uh, I guess they liked naming songs uh, similar to Motown ours. But uh, really good band, you know, uh, and a really good record. Then Mars Needs Guitars. Um, not This one is okay. It's not one that I'm, I reach for very often. I think the big single off of this was Like Wow Wipeout. Remember the video back in the day of that one? Um, trying to remember what other... None of the other tunes are sticking out in my memory. I haven't listened to this in a long time, but I'll have to pop this one in. But there's that record. And then this one I remember my brother having on cassette. And this one, I think, is what really kind of started catching my ear uh, before I picked up uh, Magnum Cum Louder on CD myself. This is Blow Your Cool. Um, a couple of the bangles do some backup uh, vocals on this one. It's, a, an, again, a really, really good collection of songs. Out That Door, What's My Scene, Good Times is really good. I, at the bangles, I know sing backup on that. Um, I Was The One, Hell For Leather, In The Middle Of The Land, Come On, uh, My Caravan. Just, yeah, really uh, great collection. I would say out of all of their records, these three, Blow Your Cool, Magnum Cum Laude, and Stony Jerome, these three, if you wanted to like kind of dig into the band and just kind of check them out, if you're not familiar with them all, I'd say definitely start with one of these for sure. Um, then I picked up a few years after it had come out, I picked up uh, Kinky. Which, it's surprising it took so long for me to pick this up, because this was the follow-up to Magnum Cum Laude, which I love so much. So you'd think, like, now I'm into the band, I'm buying some of their older stuff, you'd think whatever the next record that came out uh, that I'd pick up, but I never picked this up, and I think it's because a couple of the tunes that I heard from it, I wasn't that crazy about. I think the single was Miss Free Love 69, and it's okay. Um, but again, I, I'm not that, you know... Uh, 
I'm not that up on the, 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 this record, you know, I don't think I gave it a lot of attention. I probably need to like, uh, you know, uh, check it out again and, uh, and see maybe if my opinions changed on it a little bit. Um, then I remember, uh, in the summer when this came out, picking this up 94, I think was the summer of 94, this came out and it sounded kind of like a return to form, so to say for me, because I remember the right time was released as a single. And I remember that getting a lot of airplay on the alternative rock station. And, um, you know, I just decided to go and pick it up and, uh, and I got it and it's okay. It's got a little heavier sound to it on some tracks. Uh, I know I keep opening these CDs like 20 times, like you haven't already seen that, but <laughs> whatever. I guess I'm so used to in a lot of my other videos, I'd open it up and take the booklet out and show you the artwork and stuff inside. But these CD ones, I'm just trying to kind of whiz through to show you what I have uh, from these bands. But, uh, um, you know, if you miss me showing you the artwork, let me know. Maybe I'll switch it up and start doing that with these. But uh, just trying to keep these videos a little shorter as I ramble on and talk and talk and make the video longer. Hey, whatever. <laughs> but uh, but it's it's okay. There was a couple of songs on here. Form a Circle which has a real heavy sound to it. Less Than a Feeling was the other uh, track on here that I really, really liked. But it was okay. Nothing like it didn't blow me away at the time. And then just recently, I was buying some stuff on eBay from this one seller and they had, the prices were really low. And I think they had like a deal where it was sort of like, buy three CDs from them and get two free or whatever, something like that. So I kind of was like looking through everything they had on sale to try to find, you know, uh, to take advantage of that deal. And suddenly I come across this Hoodoo Gurus record that I um, knew existed, but I didn't have, uh, I, I don't know how it's pronounced, Mok Shao, I think is how you pronounce it. And I, they saw that there and I was like, why not? It's going to be free or 75% off, whatever the deal was. So, um, was that the first time I opened it or the second? <laughs> but, um, uh, so I decided to grab it and eh, I'm not that crazy about it. There were like maybe one or two songs on here that I thought were okay, but it really hasn't sunk in. I, I definitely need to give it a few more listens before I've made my uh, decision on this one. But, uh, yeah, it wasn't that great, you know. I mean, it, it really kind of felt like the band after Magnetism Louder really, really hit or miss for me, you know. Uh, it wasn't that crazy about some of the records they put out after that. The funny thing is, I have, I had tickets to see them live they, for the first time. They were going to be playing in the United States for the first time in a long time. I think it the, originally the tickets were for 2020. We all know how that went. So the ticket, the show was postponed and, you know, the ticket was still valid. They postponed it and I think they rescheduled it one time and then they had to postpone it again. And then they ultimately just canceled the show. And I was like, ah, oh, man, because it's I think aside from even just COVID, I think it's really getting tougher for some of these bands like that, that have a smaller following um, to come over here and tour. I think it's just so expensive with, you know, all of the um visas and all that kind of stuff that they have to secure you don't think of that stuff as a fan like oh yeah if this band like why aren't they playing in the united states you, you don't think you think like just have to book a show like you're forgetting like no these bands they have to get visas and probably insurance all this kind of stuff so it gets really expensive and almost makes it you know not worth it for them to come over here because they're ultimately going to probably be losing money so you know, I kind of was wondering if that's what was going to happen, but surprisingly, they rescheduled the show again, and I, you had to, but they, since they canceled the other ones, the old tickets were no, you know, no longer, I got refunded the money for that, so I had to buy a new ticket, so I bought one, and fingers crossed, I mean, some of you guys know that I work on the road all the time, and I never really know when a gig, I freelance, you know, I never know when a gig is going to come up or not, I'm on one now, I'm just home for a little break. I'm heading back in two days to finish out that job for a couple of months. So I'm hoping that, you know, nothing's going to come my way uh, work-wise and I will be home and able to see the show. So I'm really looking forward to that because I never got to see them live previously. I should have, but I never did. So I'm looking forward to seeing them live. I'm expecting that to be a really good show. It should be fun. Um, so that's it. This is... Uh, my Hoodoo Guru CD collection. I think I have like one or two records by them on vinyl, but you know, that's about it. I think I have Blow Your Cool and Magnum Come Louder.
But uh, yeah, interesting band. You know, if you're not familiar with them, I, I recommend checking them out. Like I said, those three records I would start with and see what you think. But uh, yeah, let me know uh, if you've ever seen them live. Let me know how the show was. And uh, let me know what your favorite record is by them or songs or what have you. And uh, we'll see you another time. Thank you for watching. 